Hey guys, my name is Gerald Morgan. I'm a sommelier and owner of a fine wine shop here in Dallas, Texas, and real men drink wine. All right, so as if wine wasn't pretentious enough, there are a lot of myths that have really been going around the wine community that I, I just wanted to expose a little bit. I wanna pull back the curtain for you and really show you that the emperor truly has no clothes, okay? Um, the first one is going to be cork, right? So you're at a restaurant, you've ordered a nice bottle of wine, the waiter or waitress comes to you with white cloth you know, over their arm, they've got the bottle, they're making the presentation, they, they go through the entire process of opening a bottle of wine, as if that's supposed to make it, you know, taste better, and they take the cork, and they put the cork in front of you. Now, I don't know when this started, but instinctively, some person at some time reached out, grabbed the cork, and thought it would be a good idea to smell it. I have a question for you. What does cork smell like? Exactly, it smells like cork. What do you never want your wine to smell like? Again, yes, cork. It is not a good idea to try to smell the cork to see if the wine is any good at all. In fact, the cork tells you almost nothing about how the wine is going to taste. Now, what I will say is there's a few of you guys out there watching right now who have really highly developed olfactory senses. You don't like men's locker rooms because of that, but for the most part, if you go to smell these corks, there's a couple of you out there who will be able to tell if there is a little bit of <clears throat> taint on the cork. The cork can actually be tainted with some kind of chemical, some kind of residue before they put it in the bottle, and that can actually get into the wine. But most of you won't tell anything from the cork. What you really wanna do is take a look at the cork and see where the wine is on the cork. I have a couple of examples here. First, this is how the cork should look, okay? You can see that the wine is kind of up towards the top of the cork, very, very few, you know, kind of encroachments into the cork, but just a little bit of color. I've got a cork here that's something that's a little bit sketchy. You can actually see in the cork that the wine has gone about halfway down the cork. Now, I would say that this bottle needs a little bit further investigation. If they put this cork on the table in front of me, I'm gonna pick it up, take a look at it and say, well, if I've had this bottle of wine, I know what it's supposed to taste like, I can taste the wine and figure it out. If I've never had the bottle of wine before, I'm probably gonna take a look at this cork and send it back. Now, the last cork that I have is definitely something you're going to send back. It's got a couple of runners on the side, but it goes all the way to the top. That means that it got hot for a little bit of time, okay? And when you have a cooked wine, it doesn't taste nearly like it should. But here's the problem. It will taste okay. Now, the winemaker didn't go out into the vineyard for months on end, spend time away from his family, taste wines until he was drunk on the floor just about every night. It sounds terrible, I know. To give you a wine that just tastes okay, right? He wants to get the best wine that he can to you. And so here's what you do. If you see something like that where the cork isn't quite right, either ask your server if you can have another bottle or just say, hey guys, look, the cork is bad. There's some kind of damage here, whether it's heat or it's a bad cork. Give them that back. What they're gonna do is put the cork back in the bottle, send it to the distributor. The distributor's gonna refund them. The distributor's gonna take it and send it back to the winery and they're gonna get a refund as well. And they're, the winemaker's gonna say thank you because you're putting my product in front of people in its best condition, right? So if you want, next time you see somebody next to you smelling the cork, you can point and laugh or you can educate them and tell them, hey, don't smell the cork, look at the cork. All right, the next thing, and my goodness, I did some research on this really recently, does chocolate pair with wine? You would have basically had thought if I had asked people about abortion or some other really polarizing issue because there was a lot of people on one side or the other and it was pretty brutal. A lot of people saying yes, a lot of people saying no. Here's the quick answer. All of you no people out there are dead wrong. Wine does pair with chocolate, okay? Usually it's the Cabernets or the Mountain Fruit, stuff like that, that's gonna go with some of that darker chocolate. It does depend on what you're pairing it with, just like anything else, but here's the short answer, yes it does. All right, another one that I've got, and this is fantastic. Some guy must have been sitting in a bar a long time ago and said, you know what, this wine has these things called legs. On the rim of the glass, you can see the little teardrops that start to form. That's what's called legs. And he was probably a fan of good legs on a fine looking woman. And he said, oh, the wine has good legs. It must be good wine. Absolutely not. It has nothing to do with the taste of a wine. The only thing that legs will tell you on a wine is maybe a little bit about how much alcohol it has in it 
or the viscosity, the thickness of the wine. That's it. So if you're trying to judge the quality of a wine by its legs, you're not gonna have a whole lot of fun. Okay, so another myth is that beer has nothing to do with winemaking. And you probably have never heard this myth before. I just kind of wanted to talk about the, the relationship between beer and winemaking because most people don't realize that they're actually very well connected. Most of the winemakers end up tasting hundreds of different wines when they do their sit down tastings to figure out which barrels have the best uh, wine to blend with other barrels. And so they have to get all the different flavor profiles down. Now, I don't know about you, but the last time I tasted 100 wines, even when I spit them out, I had a little bit of a buzz going on. So if a winemaker is doing this day in and day out, it becomes kind of a daunting task. There's a few things that they do to help ease that a little bit. One is crackers. Crackers always kind of help refresh your palate a little bit. They kind of take some of that flavor off of it. But the best thing that they do is they have a beer, right? All you beer lovers out there who just wanted to get some wine info, you're loving me right now. I know it, okay? They actually will go and have beers after they've done their tastings because their palate gets so used to the taste of wine that a lot of times they have a problem discerning the different flavor profiles. And let me tell you, these guys are fantastic at doing that. When they're blending the wine, that's their spice rack. That's where they're really taking what the vineyard is giving them and putting it into barrel and figuring out what's gonna make it into bottle and that is the ball game, right? So they want their palates to be fresh, they wanna be able to pick up on little subtle nuances in the wine, and so a lot of those guys literally will go out and have beers afterwards or beer before to cleanse their palate. I mean, the bubbles here are kinda of like little scrubbing bubbles on your palate. They clean things off, get all of the coffee and the, the lunch that you might have, or the, if it's after wine, get all that wine kinda of scrubbed off the palate so it can be refreshed again. So if you really like beer, congratulations. It's part of winemaking, but here's a problem. If you know a lot about beer, you're a frat boy in most people's eyes. If you know a lot about scotch and tequila and other kinds of liquors, eh, you might be an alcoholic. There's groups for that. But if you know a lot about wine and you're a sommelier, you're sophisticated. Cheers. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. We've got a lot more wine videos on Art of Manliness, so make sure you check all of those out. You can find us on the web. We can deliver wine and all of the accessories that you've seen here directly to your home.